Hi guys and welcome back to a brand new episode. I'm Marcus. In today's episode, we're looking at Fiserv, ticker symbol FISV. We'll cover the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, key figures, our key feature, and the technical aspect of the stock. Should we be buying the stock? Well, let's find out. As I mentioned, we're going to take a look at Fiserv, ticker symbol FISV. Uh, if we go down to the screen, we can see that there are traders on NASDAQ and are in the technology sector. Their market capitalization coming in at 68 point one billion dollars and the revenue is at 17 billion dollars p ratio is at 34 now guys normally i like companies with a p ratio of 20 or below so having a p ratio of 35 that is just too high for me so that is a no but at the same time guys whenever you see a stock with a high p ratio that basically tells you that the market expectation of that stock is high and therefore there are a good chance that you might see capital gains on those stocks because there's a a lot of, um, of market uh, participation a lot of investors are pushing the price even higher but the overhanging risk is whenever we see a company and they don't uh, meet the market expectations we'll see the stock price fall but at the same time guys we need to take in consideration is this a growth stock or is this an income producing stock so depending on what type of stock it is it will have a different type of strategy but at the same time whenever you see a stock with a low p ratio that tells you that the market expectation of that stock is low and therefore you might not see capital gains on those stocks because there's not a lot of investors expecting much from those stocks but i would like to see a, a range between 20 or below so 30 34 that is too high for me so that is a no profit margin coming in 11.9 percent that is a bit low normally i like companies with a profit margin of 15 percent or higher so 11.9 that is too low so that is a no for me price to sales ratio coming in at four i like it because i like companies with a price to sales ratio of maximum four price to book value coming in at two i like it because i like companies with a price to book value of maximum three so this is within my range so that is a goal for me so if we were to summarize the PE ratio is too high, but the price to book value and the price to sales ratio is within my range. So this will be interesting to look uh, look at. So they don't pay out any dividend, which is a shame because I like those recurrent income. If a uh, return on equity, basically what it tells you is that the company's ability to create return on their equity, meaning th their ability to create return on the capital you but to invest in them and seeing a return of 6 uh, that is too low for me so that is a no return on assets coming in at two two percent that is also way too low for me so that is a no so the stock is currently traded 106 dollars per share if we take a look at the moving average we can see that we are above the 50 day and the 200 day moving average so what does this tell us well it tells us that we might see stock price increase capital gains on those stock we might see the stock price in, in, arise if we take a look at the chart, we can see that we have more or less been moving within a negative trend channel for quite some time, but has have lately seen a breakout. We saw here, for instance, a breakout, and then we uh, it did a, a, a push upwards, and then hit a ceiling. Now it, it went back down, tested a new low, and now it's trying to push even higher. So if we see the stock price move above this area, that it is that is a potential buy for even higher, higher price moves. But we'll take a closer look at the technical aspect further down. But let's head over to the income statement. And what we can see here is that the total revenue went from $5.7 billion and grew to $15.8 billion. And these numbers have been improving every year I uh, like it. Gross profit went from 1.2 billion and grew to 6 billion. And these numbers we fell off a bit in 2018, but have since seen better and better numbers. So that is a plus. Net income went from 1.2 billion dollars up to 1.3 billion dollars. We see a stagnate here, and then we fell off in 2019, but have since seen better and better numbers. So that is a plus. I'm liking what I'm seeing right now. But let's head over to the balance sheet. And what we're interested here is that. The the current assets versus the current liabilities and we can see there is a difference between current assets and the current liabilities basically what we are looking at 
important here is that if the company were to convert their current assets to cash, they are able to pay off their current liabilities. I don't like it, so that is a plus. But they are far from being able to pay off their total liabilities, and that is negative. And if we we'll take a look at the uh, total liabilities, and uh, we can see that it went from 7.6 billion dollars and grew to 44.3 billion dollars. We can see a huge jump here between 2019 and 2018 a huge jump so we need to take a closer look for why this is but seeing that the the debt, the debt is growing i don't like it but it depends on what they are trying to do with the debt but seeing that the company is increasing that that is negative outstanding shares uh, went from 208 million shares up to 656 million shares and we can see that these numbers have been growing they did a buyback in 2020 but overall trend is negative so what what are what are we looking at right now whenever you see company the outstanding shares increase that basically t is telling you that you're being diluted as investor meaning your share of the company is decreasing you see uh, uh, companies issue more shares in order to bring in more capital without taking on more debt so there's a lot of investors that either skip this part or doesn't know about it because they've been looking at the balance sheet they see a company with a, a lot of assets uh, uh, not a, a, the debt's not growing that much which is great which is fine which is what we are looking for but on the other hand we can see that the company's issuing more and more shares and that is a way to bring in more capital without taking on more debt and whenever you see these numbers decrease that basically means that the company is doing buybacks they are buying back their, uh, their outstanding shares meaning that your share of the company is growing because there are fewer and fewer available shares out there and seeing that these numbers are increasing that is a no for me now let's head over to the cash flow and what we're interested in here is that the operating cash flow versus the capital expenditure we can see the operating cash flow came in at four billion dollars and the uh, uh, capital expenditure 1.2 billion dollars making a difference of 2.8 billion dollars i like it and we can see that the operating cash flow went from 3.3 billion dollars and grew to four billion dollars fell off a bit in 2018 but have since seen better and better numbers we fell off a bit in 2021 but overall trend is positive capital expenditure went from 287 million up to 1.2 billion and these numbers have been improving every year i like it i like the fact that they are improving their operating cash flow at the same time continue to invest in their business I like it. So now let's jump over to the key figures. And what we can see here is that the earnings per share went from $5.9 per share down to $2 per share. And we can see here these numbers have been dropping. We improved a bit in 2020, but overall trend is negative. Now, uh, revenue per share went from $27 per share uh, down to $24 per share. We see here we dropped and fell off and then improved a bit in 2020 and then have been seeing better and better numbers so this is a plus i like it now i have to recall that earnings per share we fell off a bit but have since seen better and better numbers so i have to take that back so that is a plus there I've seen an improvement in the last few years equity per share went from 13 dollars per share up to 47 dollars per share and these numbers have been improving we fell off in 2018 and then uh, have been doing better and better numbers we fell off a bit in 2020 but overall trend is positive even though we're seeing fluctuation here i don't like fluctuation but we are seeing better and better uh, numbers so that is a plus dividend per share they used to pay a dividend of 17 cents and these numbers have been dropping that is negative um i don't like this so that is a minus dividend per share went from 13 percent down to 4.6 percent also we're seeing that they are reducing the uh, uh, the share of the uh, the payout and this is also negative uh, i like uh, companies that pay out between 20 and 60 percent because i want to, uh, some uh, some um, uh, uh, some dividends but at the same time i don't want them to pay out too much of the shares uh, the capital because i want some of the capital to remain in the business for investments for acquisition and just overall strengthening the financials so seeing that they are reducing these numbers that is negative gross margin we, it went from 21.5 uh, percent up to 38 percent and we fell off in 2018 but have seen seen better and better fluctuation here but overall trend is positive 
I like it. Operating margin went from 24.6% down to 10.7%. Improved a bit in 2018, but have since then fell off again and have been dropping a bit of fluctuation, but overall trend is negative. They need to find a way to become more efficient and really reduce their cost and find some stability because there is a lot of fluctuation here. And I'm not liking what I'm seeing right now. Profit margin went from 21.8% uh, down to 8.4%. And we can see that these numbers have been dropping. We've improved a bit in 2021, but overall trend is negative. They need to find ways to become more efficient, reduce the cost of goods sold, reduce the operating costs, and improve those uh, profit margins. So that is negative. They, they have some challenges and, and work to do. Return on equity, as I mentioned, tells you about a company's ability to create return on their equity, meaning their ability to create return on the capital you're about to invest in them. You can see it went from 45.6% down to 4.3 percent improved a bit in 2018 but have since seen a bit of fluctuation here we dropped um, uh, uh, dropped a lot but has of last three years seen better and better numbers i uh, like that return on assets went from 12 percent down to 1.7 percent we can see here that these numbers have been dropping but has of lately seen better and better numbers i uh, like it so uh, i'm liking what i'm seeing here here but we need to ask ourselves uh two three years a good sign or do we need more uh, more years five years in order to say hey the trend is actually uh, uh, changing and um, solidity what it, it does is it tells you about a company's financial strength for the long term and we can see it went from 26.5 percent up to 40.5 percent and these numbers have been growing every year uh, that is a plus so we can see that we have been improving we fell off a bit in 2018 but overall trend is positive balance sheet liquidity went from uh, uh, 0.35 up to 0.71 and this we fell off a bit in 2018 but have since seen better and better number a bit of fluctuation but overall trend is positive uh like it basically what a balance sheet liquidity tells you about it tells you about a company's financial strength for the short term when we are seeing these numbers improve now guys we have gone through the income statement balance sheet cash flow and the key figures now over to our key feature basically what it, it does is we call it for uh, we call it a uh, stock analyzer it gives you a simplified holistic overview of the company's performance and it saves you a lot of time we can tell here right away that the p ratio is above 20 that is negative they don't pay out any dividend negative the dividend payout share used to be uh, less than 60 percent that is a plus but there are still below 20 percent uh, percent which is the range between 20 to 60 percent but still below 60 percent that is good number of outstanding shares have been increasing that is negative revenue increased over the past five years that is positive profit margin below 15 percent negative profit increased over the past five years that is positive current assets greater than current liabilities positive solidity increased over the past five years positive and balance sheet liquidity increased over the past five years positive and debt equity ratio uh, decreased over the past five years positive and the total liabilities have grown over the past five years positive guys as you can tell it gives you a simplified holistic overview of the company's performance if you want to dig through the numbers you can dig through the numbers or have the software do the heavy lifting for you and you can have the software along with everything we've gone through plus the stock analyzer and uh, 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 opportunity to access to our discussion forum where you'll be able to chat with me along with other members for only ten dollars per month so make sure make sure to head over to commerce.se and become a member today okay thank you but now let's take a look at the technical aspect of the stock so here we have the stock uh, as you guys can tell as i mentioned earlier that we we have seen uh, the stock move within a negative tr trend channel before we broke out of that channel and now pushed to a new high and and now uh, it went down a bit and now we are seeing that the, the the buyers are coming back so there is an opportunity here uh, we can see that we have a double top up here uh, so we could see the stock price break out of this level if 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 it does that could be a buying opportunity and see the stock price go back up to the resistance level here if we enter here we could see a potential price move of uh 11 12% that is 
too low for me, but that is acceptable acceptable for other investors and traders. But for me, that is just too low. So, uh, and also, we don't really have the fundamentals telling us that is pushing the price even higher because we saw sure their their earnings per share is is improving, but their profitability is really hurting. They need to find ways to become more efficient, reduce their operating uh, cost of goods sold. They need to reduce their operating cost and improve their profit margin. And if they do, I believe that will attract a lot of investors. By looking at the chart right now, I would, wouldn't be, be buying right here because there's a lot of risk that we might see a double. Let me see here. Let me see here. So be, because we might see what could happen is that we see a double top here and also could see that the price breaks down and if we have if it breaks down below this level we could see a sell off the stock price moving back down and this would be a buying opportunity here so if the price were to break down below to back to the channel and re reach these levels then that would be a buying opportunity because if you hold this stock we could see potential move in the future upwards if it moves upwards to the resistance level up here we could see a price move of 40 percent uh like that so that is what uh, a, pot a, a potential scenario that could happen you either wait uh, for the price to break above this area break uh, for a potential price move of 12 percent or we could see the stock price continue to consolidate or break down below. If we break down below towards the uh, $85 per share, that is a buying opportunity. So and hold it for quite some time. It would be great to hold it some time and, and er at the same time earn dividends while also earning capital gains. So that is um, uh, something to think about. So what are the key takeaways? I've uh, done some notes and uh, what I like is though I like the fact that the revenue and the net income is growing year over year and also like the fact that the current assets are greater than the current liabilities. But I'd like to see greater difference between the current assets and the current liabilities because if they do convert the current assets to pay off the current liabilities, sure they will steal some, some cash uh, left but that is not much to cover operating costs and so forth so i would like to see them start reducing their liabilities and another thing i like about the company is that the f is that is the fact that they are doing buybacks so if you are intending to buy or you currently hold some stock that is positive for you as an investor because that means that your share of the company is growing you you're getting a bigger uh, part of the of the business uh, they have a strong operating cash flow and they continue to invest in their business which is a plus and i'll uh, and looking at the key Fix, we can tell that the company is really struggling with their profitability and that is concerning and that is a, a major risk a red flag for me so uh, i'm not buying uh, looking to buy the company right now the fact that they don't pay any dividends so that means that the strategy needs that we need to find a good position to enter and have a good exit strategy and, and get in and then uh, get out but as i mentioned i like companies that uh, uh, pay out dividends because i like those income recurrent income so that's a way to study and analyze the business uh, so what uh, guys what what's your thought of of the business please let me know in the comment section below and i truly hope you have enjoyed this episode and please give me a thumbs up comment and subscribe and until next time guys take care bye bye